the first edition of The Voyage of the Beagle by Charles Darwin. I'm Adam Douglas from Peter Harrington, and I'd like to show you this remarkably fine, fresh set of this famous work. Now, the whole uh, voyage was uh, rather more complicated than simply calling it The Voyage of the Beagle. Um, would uh, suggest, and the book uh, that arose from it, the first book publication, was this uh, complicated uh, four-volume work, with some of them being the narrative of uh, Captain Fitzroy, some of King, and the third volume dedicated to Darwin's account of his, what he called his journal of researches um, made on the voyage. So if we look at uh, Darwin's Volume. We'll see that that is in the, the first issue of the, there's the title page, Narrative of the Surveying Voyages of His Majesty's ship, Ships Adventure and Beagle, between the years 1826 and 1836. And there on the next page, we get the fly title, Volume 3, Journal and Remarks, 1832 to 1836, which was when Darwin was on the voyage. And he's there simply described as uh, Charles Darwin, Esquire, MA, Master of Arts, and he's Secretary of the Geological Society. It was announced um, at the same time as this was published that he'd been elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. And so the second issue of this volume uh, adds the letters FRS, the famous letters and uh, prestigious letters FRS after his name. So this is the first issue before he'd uh, received that honour. Now, as uh, many of Darwin's books are, being published in uh, this kind of uh, Victorian cloth, in this case by Henry Colburn, his later works were published by John Murray, uh, these, for the collector's point of view, are really condition books. Uh, you really want to be looking out for the best condition uh, books that you can find. And uh, if I put the set back together again, in probably in no particular order, we can have a look at some of the details. Um, there. Uh, as usual, if we go to the top of the spine, at the head of the spines here, we'll see there's a little bit of rubbing to the cloth, which has caused just a couple of nicks, and a little bit of wear, where the thin cloth reveals the paper lining underneath. And then the book itself is rather complicated production because there are lots of maps and the maps are put into these end pockets. They slide out of end pockets. So sometimes the maps are missing or in poor condition or the end pocket has actually split. But in this case, these are in good condition. If you look at the inner hinges of the book, again, you'll see that they're intact and firm, again, suggesting a very good set um, of the book. You see there the shadow of the linen scrim underneath. Um, they've got contemporary ownership inscriptions. It's quite interesting um, uh, fellow here. He's uh, Francis Lucen Gore. He's one of those English names that you sort of don't pronounce as you spell it. It looks like it should be Leveson Gower, but it's pronounced Lucen Gore. He was later Earl of Ellesmere. He was um, a patron of. Uh, the arts and the sciences. Uh, he was a book collector, member of the Roxburgh Club, so um, quite a, uh, a, a significant person, although not um, of huge uh, direct scientific significance. But the book itself is a uh, very studious uh, representation of all the things that were found on this, the most important voyage uh, of Darwin's life, certainly, and for 19th century science, one could argue the same. For more details on this copy and uh, many other Darwin titles and other works of uh, natural history, please see the Peter Harrington website.